Have you ever wondered why we have icon all over the place in our holy church? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. I would like to ask you this question. Whom do you think Jesus came for? Whom do you think Jesus came for? He came for imperfect, sinful people. Jesus came to save whom they were lost. This morning, our Holy Church honor one of the greatest evangelists, St. Luke, who was a Syrian by birth and trained by St. Paul in so many missionary. According to the letters of St. Paul, he was a doctor, a physician, but he was also an artist. But Luke also was one of the 70 apostles that met Jesus face to face after Jesus' resurrection on the road to Emmaus. If you look to my left and to your right, you'll find a huge mural honoring St. Luke, the evangelist who wrote the Gospel of St. Luke, and he's sitting behind Greater Syria, Jerusalem, Antioch, and painting the icon of the Virgin Mary. The mural depicts that St. Luke is an artist according to the church tradition, and he was the father of iconography. So somebody asks you why you have icon, tell them we inherited this by St. Luke. And he wrote his gospel, I think by interviewing the Virgin Mary. You know how blessed it is to sit at the feet of the Virgin Mary and ask her question. St. Luke did that. He addressed the gospel to a very important man. His name, Abdullah, or servant of God. In Greek, means Theophilus. Because maybe Theophilus took it upon himself to print the Gospel of St. Luke. And every church is blessed with men and women who give a little extra. Yes, my dearly beloved, he wrote his Gospel containing the teaching, preaching, miracle and instruction, and the death and resurrection of Christ. But St. Luke also wrote another book, the book of the, the Act of the Apostle. Every time we read the Epistle or the Apostle, which entail the life of the early church from the day of Pentecost till the day that St. Luke traveled to Rome. I asked the question, what makes St. Luke's gospel so unique? Well, we hear from his gospel, the birth of John the Baptist, and how the angel appeared to Zechariah and Elizabeth and told them, you're going to have a baby. And how Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary and said to her, you're going to have a baby and name him Jesus. Also, 
He tells us about some miracles. How Jesus healed the sick, the ten lepers, and how he healed the servant who Simon the Zealot cut off his ear at Jesus' arrest in Gethsemane. Jesus took his ear, put it back. So these are the uniqueness of his gospel. Also, he told us stories and parables about the kingdom of God like the Good Samaritan, the prodigal son, the Pharisee and the publican, and all these are read in our church during Great Lent before we start Lent, and maybe during Lent. He proclaimed that the gospel of Jesus is the gospel of mercy, and salvation and it's one of my favorite gospel because he tells us that Jesus was presented he was circumcised at when he was eight days old and presented to the church as you present your children when he was 40 days old and he read in a temple when he was 12 years old and he began when he was baptized he was 30 years old so he, he tells us something about the childhood of the Lord but he wrote us prayer the prayer you hear in the church Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed are the womb that carry Jesus. Thank God the Catholic Church made this prayer very famous. But it's our prayer too. He gave us another prayer. When the angel announced the birth of Christ to Mary. Mary said, my soul magnify the Lord. And my spirit rejoice." In God my Savior. He also gave us the prayer when Zechariah, son was born, John the Baptist. And Zechariah said, Blessed is the Lord God, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And he raised a horn of salvation for the house of David. And he gave us another prayer at the birth of Jesus. We read, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, talking to the shepherd, and the glory of the Lord shone upon them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Today in the city of David, a city of a Savior is born. And the angel sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all. These are the prayer of the church. In the last prayer, St. Luke record when Jesus was churched. And he said, Lord, let your servant depart in peace. When I took my mother back to Syria, as she requested to die in her home, we could not go to Lebanon because the war was raging in Lebanon. And as my mother reached her bedroom, she uttered this prayer, Lord, 
let your servant depart in peace for mine eyes have seen your salvation my eyes have seen your salvation yes my dearly beloved the greatest treasure was St. Luke emphasized to us that we can be saved even after we sin he gave us the doctrines that Jesus came to this world not to call the perfect, the saint, but to call you and I who are imperfect. And Jesus makes us perfect. So we come to church broken, sinful, and we leave wholesome, healed, because the Lord chose us. He also tells us that we need the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit empower us every day of our life. It's the engine that keeps us moving, whether to work, whether to teach, whether to go through struggle, whether to be happy or to be sad, in season and out of season. This is why we say, Nishkur Allah. Your mother told you to say, thank God. So these were all brought to us and taught by St. Luke. So we inherited this treasure that we are in return not only to honor St. Luke but to become a prayer to God as St. Luke prayed. Yes, my dearly beloved, we are saved through Jesus Christ who came to this world to save sinner. The Holy Spirit changes us, transforms us, and to become the salt of the earth. As St. Paul says, let your conduct be mixed like the salt of the earth. Speak gently, smile, and be a light. No Christian can be carrying always loom and doom. You can't. You are to shine like Christ shine in our heart every day of the year. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God.